Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number five. And if you want to download this workbook, 135 chapter 00, click on the link below the video. This video, we got to talk more on the sheet tab number formatting. I'm actually going to use this scroll arrow. Very important. This is just as important as formulas because our main goal is we don't want to be tricked by number formatting. Now, let's just see that there's this idea number formatting is a facade that sits on top of a number and can show a number that is different than the underlying number. Well, we saw this last video when we type 2000 into a cell, control enter, and then I'm going to apply currency either going up here, currency or the keyboard shortcut, control shift 4. What? Look at that. I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 characters, but up in the formula bar I can see that really the only characters that are in the cell are 2000. Zero, zero, zero. That's four characters. So there's a disconnect between what we see with our eyes and what's in the cell. Let's see an example, another example of this. Right here I have 9.99. .99. Up in the uh, number group there's increase and decrease decimal. So I'm going to decrease. All right. So people do this all the time. In fact, one of the most common number formatting mistakes that people make is they they do something like this, and they're like, OK, yeah, 10 times 10. So they do this calculation. Equals, equal sign starts your formula. You get your cell reference times, and then your other cell reference. When I hit Enter, it better be 100. Of course it's not. Now, here's the problem. There's a disconnect. When I click here, I see 10 with my eyes. But when I look up here, I can still see that 999. So what it does when you decrease the decimal is to round it. Now, we'll officially learn the, all the rules for rounding next chapter. But what we're seeing here is there's a disconnect. What we typed in the cell and how we formatted it. Right? Very important lesson. Formulas do not see number formatting. All right? Here's another um, situation. In, in fact, um, yeah, we'll leave that like that um, just to prove our point. You get a spreadsheet from someone else, and someone already has messed it up, right? So you come here and go, yeah, OK, equals that cell times that cell. And you're like, 999. I mean, 99.9, .9, that is not the answer. You know, Excel is calculating wrong. When you see this, from now on, you're immediately going to suspect that there's a number formatting. Now, general number formatting. There's a keyboard shortcut for it. Control plus Shift plus. It's either some keyboards you see that. It's to the left of the number 1 or other uh, keyboards you'll see this. Now, the amazing thing about the general number formatting, and actually there is, you can get it up here also, is later we're going to get into a lot of trouble when we do invoicing with dates and in payroll with time. Number formatting just messes everything up often. And so knowing this trick, how to like remove all the number formatting and see what's really in the cell is great. So you can use that or Control Shift tilde. That is how it's like erasing. It doesn't erase content or stylistic formatting. It erases only number formatting. All right, um, here's a, a very important idea about number formatting. A lot of people you see if out there on the working world, they'll be like this, 20.00. Now notice I typed in the dollar sign, the period, and the 00. If I Control Enter, if you're savvy, you can see there's only a 20. There's only two characters. So I typed way too many characters. Nevertheless, you'll see this out there. And during your uh, interview, when they're asking you to enter data, you certainly don't want to do this. Now, when you get to point 0.25, you are going to have to type that. All right, so in 19.50. Oops, I forgot the dollar sign. Now, let's compare this. We can then add this, Alt equals, right? Oops, Alt equals. Now, here's what you should do. You, you either type the numbers in raw, so the raw numbers would be 20, 10, 35.25, so that one you're not going to save very many uh, typing uh, skills. But this one you will, 19.5. Don't you dare type in the dollar sign or the zero there. Some people do it this way and then format it. right? So currency, Control, Shift, 4, or currency up there. But oftentimes, there's just, just as uh, uh, 
easy to pre-format it. Now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. Keep your eye up there, Control Shift 4. So it'll show you up here. But but that is called pre-formatting. And boy, does it save a lot of time. As soon as you hit Enter, boom, there it is. So 10 and then 35.25. You know, I save one typing uh, key there, but uh, the rest of them I save quite a bit of time. And then Alt equals. All right, so another awesome thing about number formatting is it saves time entering raw data. All right, um, let's go ahead and do our formula here, revenue minus expense. So revenue is like the funds coming into a business. Expenses are the funds going out of a business. So oftentimes you want to see what is called net income or earnings or profit. Those are all synonyms. In accounting, it's called net income. So you always say equals the actual revenue, all of it, minus all of the expenses. Oh, so that. No, that's right. Sorry, I tricked myself there. Now let's go ahead and, and uh, add some currency, right? You either go up here or Control Shift 4. Now, some people who don't know accounting are like, why do they put parentheses around there? Well, in accounting, they use parentheses to indicate negative. But in a lot of situations, you just don't want that. And you don't want the red either. So that's where this keyboard shortcut, Control 1, to open up the Format Cells dialog box. Because I don't really see very many options up here to change how currency looks. All right? Control 1. And this is where the real power. Now, the border is open from last time. You can, again, you can click on any one of these. Number. This is the real power for number formatting. Because now, over here, I have some options. And every single one of these, uh, accounting, date, time, percentage, uh, fraction, we'll use all of those. And they all have a bunch of cool options. One simple one here is, and don't show me the red. I don't want to see the red. I don't want to see the parentheses. I just want to see it like that. All right, so Control-1, the Format Cells dialog box. There's another way, too. Uh, this one right here, this is called a dialog launcher. You can click there. Now, if you're using the keyboard and entering data, Control-1 is just a lot faster. All right, now on to the most important number formatting dilemma. It's not really a dilemma. It's quite an awesome thing that was programmed into spreadsheets. Um, dates. Oftentimes, we want to do something like this. We have an invoice due date and today's date. And we need to figure out the difference. Now, I definitely remember doing this by hand before using spreadsheets. I took out my little calendar I keep in my wallet or on my invoicing desk, and I count on my fingers the number of days. That uh, Spreadsheets basically made that completely obsolete. So people doing invoicing, accounts receivable, accounts payable, loans in banks, short-term loans, you're always counting days. Spreadsheets revolutionize this. But you got to understand what is happening with the date. Now, I'm going to click in this cell, and I look up on the formula bar, and I'm like, huh, look at that. They're the same. This is where number formatting gets tricky, because I can see up in the formula bar in here. Remember, we did and 200 and Control Shift 4. Now, here I can look up in the formula bar and see what's actually in the cell. But with dates and time, you can't do that. Here's the rule. When you type in a date like this, that date is not really what goes in the cell. The number 1 goes for one, January 1, 1900. The number 2 is uh, January 2nd, 1900. Uh, 9 22 2011 is 40,808 days since December 31st, 1899. Right? 1 all the way up to 40,808. Now, the reason they programmed it this way is so that you can do date math. If we just had dates like this and did you know, subtraction or addition, it would give us an error. But since hidden underneath is a number, uh, when we subtract them, it'll automatically calculate how many days are between two dates. Now, let's prove this to ourselves. I want to apply the general formatting. Actually, just to, to show you that there's no trick, let's type this one in 9-22-2011. That's how you have to enter dates. You can either use slashes or dashes. right? So I Control Enter. I typed it in. I see it up here. But now, I remember. General number formatting will wipe away all the number formatting and show you what's really in the cell. So I'm going to go up to this and general. By the way, you can already see there's date applied. So that's like as you type it, it applies date formatting. 
I can either go General or Control Shift tilde. And no way, that is what's in the cell. Now I'm going to do the reverse here. I type these numbers in, and now let's apply date formatting. I can either come here. The limitation of this dropdown is the short date and the long date. That's all there is. If I Control-1 and go to Number, if I click on Date, there's all sorts of amazing date options that I can have. All right, I'm going to select this one right here, the default, and click OK. So there, we went from integers up to dates, seeing that this number formatting is applied on top of the number. Here we did the reverse. We had the dates, and we wiped it away to prove to ourselves that that's what's there. All right, so that's a concept. Dates are called serial numbers, meaning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can already see I uh, forgot to capitalize it right there. Serial numbers. Now let's see it in action. And we'll get lots of practice. In, in the chapters on loans, we're always going to have to calculate when a loan is due, how many days a loan uh, is outstanding, and in this case, an invoice. And you have to figure out how late the invoice is. So a uh, formula starts with the equal sign. And it's always the later date minus the earlier date. That tells you how many days between. So there's 20 days. Just for fun, let's go ahead and prove, because these are the numbers that are really hidden underneath there, equals this minus this. Uh, OK, so one other example for dates. If you had a loan issue date, and let's I'm going to change the column width. Let's say it's today, 9.23. And it was a short-term loan, uh, and the days until it was due was 90. Well, what's the due date? Oh, golly, I absolutely remember doing these calculations on my fingers. Well, since this underneath is a hidden serial number, and this is a number, you can simply add them. And there it is. The loan is going to be due on 12-22. Not only that. But in our invoicing chapter, I'll show you examples of it knows the this kind of dates and date formulas can handle leap year. All right, a couple more things. We've got to talk about percent number format. When we get to chapter uh, three, I think it is, we'll do all sorts of percent problems. Uh, percentage increase, percentage decrease, um, and so on. So here I want to introduce you to the percent number format. Now here we have an interest rate and amount invested. Now we can probably do this in our head. 0 0.03, if we format it, it would be 3%. And if you get 3% for the year on 100 bucks, and it's just calculated one time a year, it's probably going to be $3. So we can do this calculation equals this. That means the amount you put in the bank times the interest rate, $3. Now, that cell was pre-formatted. That is not how you usually see it. Usually, you have a number like this, and you apply the number format. Now, please don't use that button right there. In fact, I should. That is. Um, gets people into more trouble, I think, than any other button in Excel. And I'll show you in just a moment. But here, we're going to play it safe. I'm going to Control-1 and go to Number Formatting. And there it is, Percent. There it is. I can say however many decimals I want. There it is, 2. I'm going to leave it like that. Click OK. So now I can go equals this times. And it will give me the same number in chapters uh, 2 and 3, we'll talk about fractions, decimals, and percentages. And we'll talk all about how to go back and forth between the two. Here, we're just seeing that it, we applied a number format on top. Three. It looks like I didn't format this one. So I'm going to apply currency. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, but watch there, Control-Shift-4. All right, now here's the big trouble. You get the spreadsheet from someone else, right? And they've messed with it. So you go, oh, yeah, no problem, 4%. Wow, that's more than I thought. So equals that times that. 350, that's not right. 4% times 100 is $4. Immediately, what do you do? Your instinct, we saw this um, up above. When your instinct is when the formula 
is giving us a different answer than what we see. Remember, formulas don't see number formatting. They look at the underlying number. You immediately suspect number formatting. Now, on this one, I'm just going to uh, let you know that probably it's the um, decimal. So I'm just going to click there and click Increase Decimal. And sure enough, there it is. Someone had decreased the decimals. All right. We've seen import a couple important lessons about how not to get tricked by number formatting. All right, again, that was a bunch about number formatting in the percentage chapters, the invoicing chapters, and payroll chapters. Or invoicing and investing, payroll, and percentage chapters. We'll talk a lot more about number formatting. All right, uh, next video, we'll talk about the order of operations. Just four little rules we have to remember. See you next video.